Hello everyone and welcome back. In previous session, we saw how we can add a welcome message to our bot and we use suggested actions type of activity to present a user with possible tasks that the user can perform uh, using the bot. In this session, we are going to create our make reservation dialog, which will be a component dialog. Now a waterfall dialog will contain a number of steps which will be run in a sequence when the dialog is uh, triggered and each step will contain one or another kind of prompt. In our example, we are going to use a number prompt, a text prompt, a confirmation prompt which will just take a yes no as a value and we are also going to use a date and time prompt and then we are also going to validate our prompt. Uh, we'll take one example of a number prompt and then try to validate the values entered by the user and see if the user has entered a correct uh, number in a particular range or not. So let's go ahead and start building our component dialog. So we are back to our Visual Studio code and I have rrbot.js file open right now. So rrbot is our main dialog and now you need to create a component dialog. So before creating the component dialog, let's create a folder in the root directory and call it component blocks and under this folder let's create a new file and call it make reservation dialog .js. now dialogs are a central concept in the bot framework SDK and is provided by bot builder hyphen dialogs module you can think of dialogs as structures in your bot that can act like functions in your bot's program and each dialog is designed to perform a specific task. In this case, we are going to make a reservation for a user. Now there could be many dialogs that you will build into your bot and you can specify the order of individual dialogs to guide the conversation and you can invoke them in different ways. You can invoke a dialog from another dialog or you can replace a dialog or you can restart a dialog. So we have our make reservation dialog file ready. Uh, let's start adding different components one by one. So let's define the component dialog and waterfall dialog type classes provided by bot builder uh, dialogs library. In the next step, we also need to define all the different type of prompts that we are going to use inside the waterfall dialog. So let's define all the prompts. So we are going to use confirm prompt, choice prompt, date time, number prompt and text prompt. So each of these prompts are implementation of dialog class type and each are added to dialog set with a specific string ID. So when your bot wants to start a certain dialog or a prompt within the dialog set, it uses that string ID to specify which dialog or prompt to use. So let's add the string constants values for each dialog type we are going to use in our waterfall dialog. Now let's start defining our make reservation dialog class, which is an extension of component dialog. So I'm gonna just paste. So here I have defined a class called make reservation dialog and it's an extension of component dialog. I don't have anything in the constructor right now. We'll slowly add the dialogs and dialog set into it. And in the super method under the construction, I'm just providing a, a dialog ID for the class itself. In the make reservation dialog constructor, um, we need to create the waterfall steps, prompts, and waterfall dialog. And then we are going to add them all in a dialog set. So let's add all the prompt type dialogs first. So here you can see all the text prompt. So here you can see all the prompts are uh, the implementation of dialog type. That's why we are adding all the prompts as dialogs. And we are passing the string IDs while creating the different prompt objects. So here you can see for the number prompt we have. So here you can see for the number prompt we have added another argument while creating the uh, number prompt object and this is a function that we are going to invoke to validate the value provided by the user so we'll add this later and see how it works so in the next step we are going to add waterfall dialog which will consist of multiple steps 
These steps will gather information from user required to create a restaurant reservation. So let's start defining these steps. So here you can see I've added another dialog of type waterfall dialog, uh, just like we added the prompts. And I've initialized the waterfall dialog with the waterfall dialog string ID that we defined earlier up there. Now, under the waterfall dialog, we must define a number of steps, and these steps will be run in a sequence from top to bottom. So here you can see I have added few steps which are required to make a restaurant reservation. So in the first step, I have defined I'm going to ask for a confirmation that the user wants to make a reservation or not. This is going to be a simple uh, yes no prompt. Then in the next steps, I'm going to ask the user for the name and number of people who are going to uh, be there at the restaurant. Then I'm going to ask for the date and time at which the reservation has to be made. And then in the end, I'm going to show a summary of all the values entered by the user. If the users want to go ahead and make the reservation, I'm going to uh, give a confirmation of reservation back to the user. So in all, we have seven steps that we are going to uh, develop in our waterfall dialog model. So that's all for the entries in our constructor. Now, once we have defined our waterfall dialogs and all the steps under it and our constructor definition is complete. Now we need a way to trigger this dialog from the main dialog, which is RRBot. Main dialog will use a run helper method to access the component dialog. The run method handles the incoming activity in the form of uh, turn context and passes it through the dialog system. So let's create this method. So here we can see we have overridden the run method provided by component dialog and we have used run method to create and access the dialog context. So here we are forwarding just the uh, turn context which was created by adapter in our main dialog to the component dialogs run method and we have defined an accessor here. So what is an accessor? Accessor is a state property accessor for the dialog state property. I uh, don't get too confused with it. We are going to see in detail what are the different type of uh, state management objects. This particular accessor is to access the different properties uh, which we are going to save under dialog state object. Since component dialogs are defined as inner dialog set, uh, we must create an outer dialog set that's visible to activity handler code and use that to create a dialog context. So here you can see we are creating a dialog set using uh, the dialog set component provided by what builder dialogs to access the state of that dialog we are passing accessor state property variable and then in the second step we are adding all the dialogs we uh, defined earlier in the constructor to the dialog set now in the next step we are defining a dialog context which we are creating using the create context uh, method of dialog set object and we are passing the turn context so this particular turn context is visible by the activity handler uh, in our main dialog but we need a different dialog context which is visible uh, to all the steps we are defining under the component dialogs in the next step we also need some kind of mechanism to check if the dialog was already active when the user land on this particular component dialog and if it was at one of the intermediate steps. So let's add that logic to check from which step the dialog needs to run. So this block of code is going to check if a previous dialog was active or not. And if it doesn't find any previously active dialog, it's gonna start the whole waterfall dialog from the beginning. And if it finds that the dialog was already active and it was on one of the steps, then it will start the dialog from that particular step. So the most important thing to note in this piece of code is that we are passing the turn context coming from the adapter to our component dialog. And then we are also passing the turn context to our dialog set by turning it into a dialog context. In future, we'll see that this turn context is passed through all the underlying component boards and all the different dialogs that we are going to call. And that's how the whole conversation flow is managed inside the bot. So we have a run method in place 
uh, which we'll use to trigger this waterfall dialog. Now in the next step, we need to define all these steps that we mentioned under the waterfall dialog. So the first step is to ask user for a confirmation that if the user really wants to go ahead and make a restaurant reservation. And this is and this is going to be a choice prompt and we are going to present user with uh, yes and no as two options. If the user chooses yes, then we'll go ahead and ask the user for the uh, name under which he wants to make the reservation, which will be the second step. So let's go ahead and mention all these steps. So all the steps are asynchronous in nature. We are going to make async calls to these steps. Inside the first step, we need to present user with a choice prompt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just paste the prompt. So as you can see, we are presenting the user with a confirm prompt, and this is the prompt that we uh, defined earlier up there, and edit the dialog in the constructor. So here we are just presenting the user with confirm prompt and asking the user uh, in the second argument, would you like to make a reservation? And after that, you can just provide the list of choices that you want the user to be presented with. So here we are just putting yes and no as the possible answers. So let's go ahead and define the second step. So let's just start writing our second step. I'm going to type it get name. And then I'm going to provide the step context. Open the function. And then I'm going to paste the uh, text prompt. So in this so in this step, we are providing user with a text prompt that we defined earlier. And then we are going to ask user the name uh, in which we want the reservation to be made. So behind the scenes, prompts are a two-step dialog. Uh, what does it mean? So the first step will ask the user for a particular value. And then when the user inputs that value or provides that value, uh, we can fetch that value in the second step or the following step. So in this case, we can fetch the value that the user provided by using step dot result variable. So in this case, we want to check if the user typed uh, uh, yes or no as the answer. And if the user typed yes as the answer, then only we want the user to be prompted with uh, the name prompt. So let's put a if case. And here we are going to just check if the user type yes. So if the user types yes, uh, we are going to get the true boolean as our value. So I'm checking for true boolean. And then we are going to prompt users to enter the uh, name in which the reservation has to be made. So that's our second step. So don't worry much about the case when the user types no as the input. Uh, we are going to add that logic in, in a short while. For now, let's assume that the user types yes and we are on the second step. And let's move on to our third step. So the third step is to get the value of a number of participants that are going to visit the restaurant. So this is going to be a number and we are going to use number prompt for that. So our step was get number of participants, get number of participants, pass the step context, open the function and then I'm going to provide the number prompt asking for number of participants that are going to uh, be there. But how do we save the name provided by a user in the previous step? So for that, you can save the previous test results in a step dot values dot. Uh, you can define a name variable here, 
and then save the result result so in this step we are going to ask the user to add the number of participants or number of people who are going to uh, visit the restaurant similarly in the next step we are going to ask the date on which the user wants to make the reservation so i'm going to define that step first we need to save the value that user provided in the previous step so i'm going to create a variable t spends equal to step dot result and then ask the user for the date so I'm going to just type it return date step dot prompt so we are going to prompt the user with a date time prompt uh, that we defined earlier here yeah. let's go back and we're going to ask the question is the second argument which date do you want to make a reservation and in the next step we are going to ask the user for the time I'm just going to copy paste it and uh, modify it to get the time at which user want to make the reservation on this date. Uh, the prompt is going to be same for time. We're going to use date time prompt. And let me just modify the question. Uh, let's keep it short. So by now we have all the values that we need to make the reservation. Uh, in the next step we are going to just uh, provide a summary of all the information, all these values that we have been saving uh, to the user and then ask for a confirmation if he wants to uh, carry on and uh, make the reservation and if all the values are correct. So the next step is uh, confirm step. Let's, let's define that step. Confirm step again. We are going to pass a step context over the function. So in this step, first we want to provide all the values that we have collected so far to the user, and then ask the user if the values are correct and uh, if he wants to proceed with the reservation. So first of all, we need to save the time that we just collected in the previous step. So then we are just going to save the result in the new time variable and then we are going to define a new variable called message which will contain all the values that we have collected and then you have I'm just going to provide a simple message following values and just give a new line character so first of all I'm gonna give a name and do interpolation step dot values dot name okay, we need a new line and then participants and then I'm going to add number of participants again we're gonna give a new line and then give a date step values dot date new line I'm gonna step dot 
So I've defined a message. So we know that we can always send a message to user anytime we want inside a waterfall dialog. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send the user with a, a message activity. So it will be return await. We're going to use context object inside the step. And then call send activity method and then pass the message we just defined. So this will send all the values that we have collected so far to the user. And in the next step, we are just going to ask uh, for a confirmation from user that all values are correct. So this is going to be a confirmation prompt again. I'm gonna just copy it from the first step. And then copy it here. We don't need a we don't need to return a value on this step so here we're just going to ask user if are you sure that all values are correct and you want to make the reservation And we are going to give user a yes or a no option. Let's save it. So the next step is to uh, make the reservation and provide the summary of the reservation. Let's go ahead and define this step. Sync. step. Provide the step context. So in this step. Again, we are going to check if uh, the user provided yes as a value. Uh, don't worry about the case when the user provides a no as the answer in previous step. We are going to define that logic soon. So let's put a if case. Step dot result is equal to true, and then. So this is where we are going to make an actual reservation in a real life scenario. So this is where you will put the your business logic to uh, you know create the actual reservation and maybe make entries in a database. So for now we are just going to give a message back to a user that the reservation has been successfully made. So I'm just gonna send activity using the step dot context dot send activity method and I'm just gonna type reservation successfully made and once you have your actual business logic here you may want to provide user with a reservation ID uh, Right now, I'm just going to put a hard coded ID. Yeah, just put some random value. And that's it. So, the most important step is to end your waterfall dialog so that your dialog context knows that uh, the waterfall dialog was successfully completed. So, I'm going to return. Value as and dialog. Let's fix the spelling mistake. Let's have a look at our code. Uh, this needs to be date because we are saving the date from the previous step. We save the code and everything looks good. 
in the end we are returning the end dialog method so our main dialog will know that our waterfall dialog is complete so our class is ready let's export the module we have just created that's it so as i mentioned earlier we are going to validate the number of participants return value from the user and we are going to check if the value is between 1 and 150 to validate a particular prompt we need to add a validation function which will be called once the user uh, provides a reply for that particular prompt so in this case we are using a number prompt for number of participants step so i'm going to just add a validation method here and let's just call it number of participants validated and that's it so here when the user returns a value for a number prompt uh, the value will be forwarded to number of participants validator method we are just going to define this method uh, in a moment so once that validation method returns the value as true uh, then the next step will be called in the waterfall dialog otherwise the prompt will be given back to user to provide the proper value so let's go ahead at the bottom of the code and I'm going to add another function. Let's call it number of participants in data. So this method will be called. We are passing the value that user just entered for number of participants step. And then we are just returning a true or false value by checking the value. And here you can see we are just checking if the value uh, written by the user is between 1 and 150. So validation of values is just that easy. You can put any number of validations for uh, all the prompts that you are giving. So in a similar fashion, you can add validation for all the steps or multiple steps that you have put in your waterfall model. So you can put validation for uh, for a date or time. Or you can validate if the user has added a proper age and it could pretty much be anything depending on the business logic so our make reservation dialog module is complete but if you will try to run this code as is this is going to throw an error when you are running the waterfall model because we haven't yet defined the conversation state and conversation state is required to manage the state of this particular dialog or any other dialog that we are going to add in this uh, bot so in the next step we will have to add conversation state and we will define different accessors under conversation uh, state object so that using that accessor we and then we'll pass that accessor from our main dialog to make reservation dialogs run method here and then this accessor will keep a track of this particular dialog. So in the next session, we are going to see how we can add uh, storage and then use storage to create conversation state and then see how we can pass that uh, conversation state property accessor values to uh, different dialogs, different component dialogs. So that's all for this lecture and I'll see you in next session.